Hey, 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 family. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Sunday School Live with your host, Jermaine Thomas, a.k.a. The Professor. Uh, Sunday School would never be the same. Awesome. Listen, I thank you guys uh, for tracking with us. This is our episode four of Exploring the Anatomy of Belief. And uh, man, this has been uh, a pretty... Uh, phenomenal uh, uh, time, uh, subject, I believe, and people are really being impacted uh, about the uh, anatomy of belief, the series. Uh, like I said, I'm taking a, uh, a theological perspective, a philosophical perspective, and a scientific perspective uh, to really just home in uh, for us a focus and an awareness of understanding um, of how powerful our brain really is and how important thinking you know really is and how important it is to think about what we think about because we've been conditioned uh, uh, so much and so in the first episode I defined uh, what uh, belief is and then uh, in the last two episodes uh, I, I defined and try to give us an understanding of what uh, goes into our beliefs or what shaped our beliefs. And these things uh, have a impact on our larger worldview. And so uh, we talked about that over these series of episodes. And so uh, to really get the fullness out of these episodes, please go back um, and check out episode one. Let me go in my phone here and just to pull up. I just wanna see, uh, see who's there in the audience here. Um, and who's tracking with us. And for those that may be uh, tuning in and checking out the replay, or maybe just checking us out um, here for the first time, uh, I'm also doing a, a drawing uh, uh, around the Christmas holiday. I'm going to gift a book uh, to the winner. Uh, and so if you come in and you, and you like what you're hearing um, and you like these shows, please like and share um, and then comment that you shared. And so there's been a handful of people whose names have already gone into that drawing. And so right before right before Christmas, um, I'm gonna have to figure out what that date is, the Sunday, uh, that I think that might be the, ooh, got my calendar right here, the 19th. And I'll let you guys know when the actual drawing would take place uh, um, and to let you know, and then get your information and then I'll give you of the book, preferably, um, I am a Kindle uh, a reader and an Audible listener. Uh, so I have a a wealth of virtual library. Uh, but if you and I also got handbooks, and so it, you know, if you don't prefer uh, the uh, the uh, um, PDF version, virtual version, you know, of the book, um, and you rather have a hand copy, just let me know, um, and then I would definitely gift you that book and make sure it's sent to you. Um, and so that's that on um, on on clearing up on about the, uh, the, the giveaway there. So I wanted to uh, announce that. Um, in this, again, like I said, these series of, of dialogue and conversations uh, for many have been um, eye-opening and raising an awareness of understanding. And that's the heart of this show um, as we uh, eventually move on to other topics of exploration um, is to explore um, uh, the taboo often in, in the Christian context, if you will. Um, we're going to explore that. We're going to invite guests on so it won't just be me <laughs> uh, that you're hearing from. Um, and then I will uh, be highlighting clips like I am today and some of the uh, other episodes I use some some clips and some graphics to, to convey uh, some of my thinking and thoughts uh, and perspectives in the presentation there. 
so you're going to get a lot of that. This is a, 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 a response show. It's not necessarily an answer show because answers oftentimes can change. Uh, and so uh, this is not one of those stake in the ground type shows. And, you know, you must listen to me because I'm the arbiter of all things true. <laughs> uh, but my hope and my aim is to inform um, and to raise our awareness on various topics and subjects that we discuss uh, on this show. And I hope to bring in someone because even in this episode series, um, there's, a, there's a, a topic that I really want to, to hone in on. And so I think having a guest uh, on the show. So hopefully next week with episode five, I will have on a guest. So guys, be looking out for that and expecting that uh, because there is a topic within the context of exploring the anatomy of belief uh, that I want to address and deal with, particularly when it comes to um, us as believers in addressing and dealing with contradictions in our lives. Uh, and the reason why I picked this, this series of topic first is because one of the central terms to Jesus's message uh, was metanoia, which means change the way you think. And oftentimes we associate people according to their behaviors and we want to point out their behaviors, you know, uh, as singling that as a means to change. But if there's no changing of the mind and the changing of the heart of people, of a person having a metanoia moment, you know, there won't be a change in behaviors. Um, so we have to change the way we think, how we see the world around us or how the world around us really impact us is, is a lot due in part to our perceptions and how we see ourselves uh, for the most part. And, and then during this season, um, I mentioned uh, in, even in the last episode, I just want to take the time um, to acknowledge those, um, especially in this holiday season, compound that, you know, by the impact of, of COVID and how COVID is having an impact on uh, people's emotional and mental health well-being. Um, and so if you are a person that's experiencing uh, depression or um, what they call the holiday blues or, you know, really being impacted. Listen, don't sit um, in isolation. Don't sit, you know, and stew in that. Reach out for help. Um, I, I can, I, if you can inbox me, um, I can share resources or link you with resources in your area, uh, give you some contact numbers uh, for government uh, uh, associations and agencies that are specialized in dealing with people, you know, in times of crises. And so uh, please take the opportunity uh, to do that if that applies to you or someone you may know. Uh, and this is definitely an opportunity to check in with our family and loved ones and those that Father may bring to our heart, you know, during this time and season and just to check in with people. Um, listen, uh, earlier today, uh, Pastor Mike was on um, in uh, teaching on the advent of love. And I mean, it was a really phenomenal message. And I think that uh, that is the, the, the foundational uh, uh, part of where we will find true transformation is, you know, uh, becoming greater, becoming greatly aware of Father's love for us and in us. And in that space of understanding his love, you know, we'll know how to adequately address the contradictions in our lives. And from his love, that being a part of our, and I talked about this last week about the strengths perspective, right? Um, that being a part of our strengths perspective, the love and his grace um, in, in for us and to us and in us and as us, right? You know, becomes a foundational aspect of where we can find the transformational change that we all uh, desperately need in our lives, you know, especially if you come to certain junctions in life and you're aware that there's toxic beliefs, uh, there's toxic perceptions that you're having, um, and it's having an impact how you perceive the world. Uh, um, you know, we throw the labels of mental illness out there, um, and I'm not saying or downplaying uh, the need or necessity to go see a counselor, to go see a psychiatrist, or the taking of medication. You know, all of that is important. But also, too, that we take the responsibility over our mental health, too, in doing our part, you know, thinking about what we think about. And so this show um, is geared toward that to raise awareness for us when it in is explaining and talking about the anatomy of belief. I want to pull that back because a lot of times we say, you know, about my beliefs, but we really don't know what's really in the aspects uh, from a theological perspective, a philosophical perspective, and even from a scientific perspective, uh, how our beliefs can have an impact on our emotional, our physiological, um, and uh, uh, mental health well-being. Uh, and beliefs can have a, a profound impact, 
you know, on our physiological well-being. I think I talked about last week about how, you know, these scientists took a group of older men, maybe in their late 60s or early 70s, and they took them to a, a retreat uh, for like, I think like 90 days or so. And they uh, told them to imagine them being their younger selves, you know, and they had many uh, disabilities and ailments. Um, and so they set the, uh, the atmosphere, uh, you know, into the era that they grew up in. They played music, had magazines and uh, things that was associated with the era that they grew up in. And, and sure enough, over time, these men, uh, uh, chemical, uh, physiological changes began to occur in their body uh, to the doctors, uh, to these uh, scientists' amazement. You know, there was physiological change that began to occur in these men's bodies. At one point, they were using canes and weren't using the canes anymore. They were out playing flag football and things like that. So belief can have a profound effect and impact on our emotional and physical well-being. Uh, hey, Mike, what's going on with you, sir? I just spoke about uh, your Advent uh, message of love uh, this morning, which was really powerful and profound. Uh, so I really encourage you guys to really check that out. Listen, these are those messages, you know, when they resonate in your heart and your mind, they become the foundation for change. A lot of times we've been conditioned. I know I've been religiously conditioned, you know, to point out the sin and point out the behaviors in a person. And I heard one bishop say, you know, start speaking to the sun in people instead of the sin in people. And love becomes that uh, that strength-based foundational perspective in which we can begin to make the changes that we need to make, you know, in our lives. But listen, that's enough of me and my ramblings and carrying ons. I've set up a great presentation. Um, I want to talk about neuroplasticity. Uh, and so there are more well-informed individuals <laughs> that can give you that context more than I can. I'm still su studying the subject. Listen, there has been profound uh, uh, breakthrough uh, with neuroscience and technology. And, and as I stated before, my discipline of social work is built on history of research and evidence-based practice. And so uh, models of intervention. And so, you know, when something is not working, you know, the scientists come in and do research and say, hey, you know, there's maybe a more effective uh, method of approach that we can take. Um, and so that's what's happening in the whole of of counseling, uh, crisis counseling, uh, because of these breakthroughs that we're having in science, particularly in the neuroscience arena. And so we found out and it came to understand. And so in the Thomas household, we have these kind of intellectual conversations, right? Uh, about neuroplasticity and how, you know, for a long time, scientists believe that the brain, that the older you get, the more cemented thoughts and thinking become, and that there couldn't be no change. But now we're understand, I mean, if, we, if they really like paid attention to the scriptures, right, and metanoia and change the way we think that, you know, there was already there. But listen, science and, and this, and I see this, you know, really merging of science, you know, in theology, uh, really just taking the hope and just, you're going to see a greater impact um, in, in well-being upon believers when we, you know, incorporate these uh, understanding into, you know, our approach and dealing with uh, people who have had issues or, you know, uh, emotional issues, mental health issues, and it greatly inf influenced um, our impact, you know, in changing people's lives. Um, and I think a part of that is becoming more informed, more aware of what's going on out there so that we can take a different model approach. My, my experience uh, coming from a charismatic uh, church experience you know, is the deliverance thing and, and, and the demon thing and, you know, and oftentimes perpetuate more trauma, you know, uh, in a person's life, you know, uh, by doing, taking these approach, you know, the Bible says we have to take this approach, you know, uh, listen, at, even in Jesus' day, a, uh, because of the context, the cultural context, uh, the common code could have been perceived as somebody having a demon, you know? <laughs> so uh, uh, we have to take that into consideration uh, when we, you know, want to, you know, take the Bible as, as this foundational perspective and how we are to address, you know, emotional, mental health aspect in people's lives. Listen, go to see a counselor. <laughs> uh, it's okay. And if you have to take uh, medication, it's okay, you know, and to navigate these things, you know, but there is also, 
um, an awareness and understanding uh, that Father is bringing to our hearts and our lives about our identity, and that being the foundational aspect uh, for true transformation and change in our life. But even in the science of neuroplasticity, they're finding that the brain is not a fixed, and that there's actually the capacity for you to learn uh, new things, and, and actually kind of what they say, like rewire your brain. The brain uh, is a phenomenal uh, in engineered uh, uh, a piece of equipment, right? <laughs> uh, as the scripture says, we're beautifully and wonderfully made. Listen, you're beautifully and wonderfully made. And, um, and God, Father has given us the great tools and resources that we need and the change can occur and happen within us. Um, and so I hope in this segment of Anatomy of Belief uh, that, you know, these uh, clips that I'm going to show, you know, will be uh, uh, resources for you to raise your awareness to let you know, hey, listen, the aspect of change and transformation of change is possible even for you. Um, and so listen, let me bring these up. Uh, again, it's going to give you the definition of, of neuroplasticity. And then I love TED Talks. And so then there's a speaker. Um, he's a scientist um, in his uh outreach and non-for-profit and how he's helping people to change the way they think, to have these metanoia moments in their lives. And, and it's having a, a great impact um, and transformation in people's lives. And so I want to share that with you as well. So here we go. Let me pull this up. And I'm going to uh, take myself out of here <laughs> and move this stuff off the screen. All right. Enjoy. Not so long ago, many scientists believed that the brain did not change after childhood, that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. It is adaptable, like plastic, hence neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task or choose a different emotion, we start carving out a new road. If we keep travelling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. Wow, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good stuff. Uh, th this is this is how I nerd out in private <laughs> and study. Uh, also, let me just share. Uh, also, this is a resource show, and I shared this in one of the episodes um, in a video uh, by uh, Dr. Brian Allen, Daniel Allen, da Daniel A. Man. I'm sorry, uh, which is change your brain, change your life. Uh, so is 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 resources out there, but you know, again, I believe Father has given us the greatest resource, uh, you know, for transformation and change. And as the Holy Spirit, you know, and oftentimes we've not taken the time to just, you know, be still, you know, and meditate. You know, our brain goes and goes and goes and goes and goes, um, and sometimes it just it just it means for us to just, you know, be still. Um, and, 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 and meditate on his goodness. And I had an encounter, and, and the reason why I'm having these uh, 
topic discussions because these, this is what has been transformational in my life. Um, is Father changing, you know, me from the inside out, changing how I perceive myself and seeing myself as He sees me, and, and understanding my identity. I mean, uh, that doesn't mean that you don't navigate through the contradictions. And and I get into that in episode five. How do you navigate through the uh, those tr- uh, contradictions? Here I'm saying I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, right? <laughs> and I don't feel righteous, and my behaviors. <laughs> don't seem to align with his righteousness, right? And we we tend to, you know, have this dualistic perspective and how we judge ourselves in the right or wrong. Um, And and that's due in part to how we've been conditioned uh, socially and how we've been conditioned religiously and how we associate and identify ourselves, you know? And so it, it takes spirit and truth, right? to teach us and to help us to discern uh, spirit and truth. Hey, Mary, say I'm late but I'm listening. I, hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, listen, when you get a chance to just go back uh, uh, and, uh, and press the replay, uh, kind of highlighted what we covered in the uh, first few episodes or so, and kind of just set the stage for uh, these particular clips that I'm showing today. Um, and I'm going to lend myself uh, to another clip, uh, which is actually a TED talk uh, by another brother, you know, uh, uh, in, in neuroscientist actually, on talking about uh, neuroplasticity and some of the impacts and um, that he's seeing. So, uh, but yeah, no, just, and I wanna read something to you guys. Uh, uh, some of the things I do personally, like uh, self-talk, I call them self-talks. Um, some, we have to talk to ourselves, right? <laughs> uh, we've, been, we've been accustomed to talk to ourselves in the negative, you know, why not talk to ourselves in the positive, right? Um, and, and, Given in social work and being in social services, you see the impact of mental health. And um, often what I do, you know, with people or clients that I have encountered is I often take them, you know, to a place of perception and changing their perceptions and how they perceive things. Uh, I'm of the philosophy and the belief that it's uh, perceptions that produces powerful paradigms by which we live and conduct our lives by and that how we perceive the world around how we perceive ourselves, um, and 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 if we can perceive ourselves and how Father perceives us, I believe that that is the awakening that occurs in a person's life, and that you know the things that we want a person to change in their behaviors, <laughs> you know how we traditionally take the approach in the church will begin to change naturally, you know, other than this own effort of human will, and you're trying and you're trying and you're trying and you're never uh, succeeding. It's always this notion of what's what's to come, you know, this notion of becoming and never focusing in on the reality of what is, you know, to be established, as Peter said, in these present truths, you know, as he is, so am I in this life. And oftentimes you're not going to feel that way or think that way, you know, so how do you navigate through those contradictions um, and things like that? And like I said, we get into that in episode five, but that's just, that's my heart you know, uh, with the anatomy of belief is to raise our level of awareness and, and, and to highlight things that we may not have been very familiar with and say, you know what, that I do recognize that. And I do recognize, you know, the, the conditioning that uh, helps shape my belief system about myself and the world around us. You know, we're not often, you know, aware of, you know, our own biases and, you know, that takes training and emotional intelligence, right? And and help us to highlight these things. The best thing that has ever happened to me, you know, outside of, of coming into this revelation of Father's love is going to social work school. Um, sitting into sitting in classes and sitting in these trainings um, that help facilitate my awareness of understanding of of the world, how we work, in, how we work internally, emotionally. You know, the inner workings of our heart, the inner workings of our mind, our emotional state, our mental state, and paying attention to those theories of intervention and how we can bring a person, you know, out of those places, out of those. Uh, places, those low places in their hearts and their minds, um, in their thinking and how to see themselves. And so my approach often in dealing with clients is to help them to shift their perceptions and and how to uh, kind of reframe how they look at the world around us. And I asked a a person uh, not too long ago, I said, what are your strengths? And, you know, uh, and that person struggled in giving a clear answer on identifying what their core strengths are. 
And that's because many of us has been conditioned to perceive and judge ourselves totally from a negative perspective. We can't highlight, we, we don't have the wherewithal, you know, to, uh, to really highlight, you know, those core strengths that we have. And sometimes it do take, unfortunately, situations and circumstances of crisis to bring to bear, you know, those toxic beliefs, those toxic emotions and say, hey, it's time for a change. And so with this, uh, and understanding, you know, how our brain actually works, that you can change. The possibility of change is endless for all of us. And that, you know, showing us and showing you all how your brain works and that you can rewire your brain, that you can, you know, reshape it. There's some there's some parts that we play in that. Um, it's a responsibility we take in that, you know, and, and, you know, we can't control the thoughts that come into our mind, but we can manage <laughs> those thoughts. And so uh, expressing uh, uh, that in this way and, and identifying those tools and the ways that you can do that, you know, uh, prayer, the impact of prayer and, 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 and meditating in prayer, sitting still in prayer, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit say, hey, that's not, I don't, perceive you that way, you know, and you're listening to Father's heart. And he said, listen, if you, if I don't see you that way, you shouldn't see yourself that way either. You know, you begin to hear his heart, you know, and it begins to, you know, just overwhelm, you know, those negative places that become entrenched into our lives at times. Sometimes we're not even aware, you know, because there's such embedded in our subconscious aspect of our thinking uh, and that we're just not aware of these toxic beliefs and ideas that we have um, until, you know, a situation or circumstance arise, you know, but listen, there is hope for transformation and change in our lives. And Father has given us everything that we need uh, to make that transformation and change in our lives and that we are not without any good thing, right? That the change that you need is not outside of you, um, but it's in you. Um, and so, Father, we use people as a resource, as a means of a resource, you know, to raise your awareness, to, to highlight to you what you really have on the inside of you. And that's what we do in social work is we take the strength-based perspective. Um, and so for that lady that I mentioned um, uh, or for that person that I mentioned, um, um, that gave her a foundational place. Um, that she needed to build upon in her own personal life. Um, and so with that, I want to go into the next clip. Uh, and like I said, it's not, it won't just be me all the time sharing and talking. I want to pull um, these other resources in because, you know, they, they, they lay it out uh, really well um, and really informed. And so again, if, 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 if you want to nerd out, like I nerd out, listen, go to YouTube and watch TED Talks. <laughs> But anyway, here's another clip uh, that I want to uh, share with you all as well. So let me move myself out of the way. My brother and I grew up in an anxious household with a mom who had a tendency for chronic depression and anxiety, and a father who was emotionally unavailable, which at times made things worse. We grew up in a house where there was so much emphasis on academic achievement, but so little on interpersonal and emotional development. So as a result, me and my brother would grow up, but we would also grow apart. But my parents got what they wanted, the dream of all Arab parents to see their children become doctors and engineers. Our story started just a few years ago. After seven years of studying abroad, when I would finish my medical degree and become a doctor, and my brother would finish his master's in mechanical engineering, we would meet and reunite for the first time and live together. At first, I thought it was going to be strange living with him. But to my surprise, we instantly connected. It felt like he was a roommate in a past life. For starters, what I discovered is that my brother was suffering exactly from the same mental health problems I was suffering from. Anxiety, depression, psychosomatic symptoms. And we would spend all our time just talking and sharing our stories and telling each other about our experience in mental health. And I must say, it felt great to have somebody to talk to, somebody that really would understand what I've been through. But to be honest, the one and the most single thing that connected me and my brother was our passion and our love 
for science. We just loved talking about scientific ideas and concepts in science. We would spend countless nights talking about artificial intelligence, psychology, the human brain. We would particularly intersect on topics that came between mechanical engineering and the human brain. And it was in this exercise of talking about the human brain and talking about the mechanical nature of the mind where me and my brother would stumble across an idea, one key concept that would change our lives forever. To me, it's funny how one idea we learned about how our brain works, learning how our mind works, helped our mind work better. It fascinates me that one key concept in neuroscience has the power and the potential and the promise to change and transform people's mental health. And this key concept is known as brain plasticity. In my specialty, we call it neuroplasticity. But to understand neuroplasticity, we must first come to an appreciation to what the brain actually is. The human brain, the most technologically advanced agent in the universe, made out of billions and billions of neurons with trillions and trillions more in synapses and connections between these neurons. A true connectome. But to understand brain plasticity, we would have to stop at the first checkpoint, which is the neuron, the building cell of the brain. And to understand the neuron, we would have to zoom in to a very small and fine scale inside the brain structure. Neuroplasticity describes a new image, a new picture, one that is very different to the old thoughts we had about the brain. Our thoughts about the brain being dynamic, being uh, fixed and unchanging. Our thoughts, our old beliefs about the brain being uh, an agent that doesn't change in adulthood. Brain plasticity is a phenomenon that explains a very different picture. What brain plasticity emphasizes is that if we look at a single neuron, a single cell in the brain. And we realize that with continuous stimulus, and this stimulus can be anything, an emotion, a feeling, a behavior, a habit, an exercise, an experience. The repetition of the experience, the repetition of the stimulus would cause a phenomenon known as neurogenesis. And what neurogenesis means is the creation of new neurons when there was none before. This idea is fascinating. The simple shifting between one cell to, to have more neurons and have more neurogenesis on one side is known as neurogenesis, which is what we describe now. But on the reverse process, something called synaptic pruning, which means if you don't use this nerve cell or you don't use this particular circuit, you will start losing connections. And I think most of you here agree. By show of hands, who has become really good at something through simply by training every day at it? And then by show of hands, who has lost a talent, lost a skill, by not training for a period of time? Simple, right? Neuroscience is much simpler than people make it out to be. Synaptic pruning explains exactly that. The neurons that we use will grow, but in synaptic pr pruning, the neurons and the part of our brains that we don't use, we will lose synapses and lose surface area in this dimension. But to even understand neuroplasticity on a deeper sense, we have to zoom in beyond the neurons themselves and look at the fine space between the terminal endings of where neurons connect, a very small space that is actually the size of a virus, 20 nanometers. If we zoom into the space, we can come to comprehend and look at brain plasticity in a new way. And in that fine space where two neurons meet, an increase in simulation, an increase in stimulus, or an increase in the firing activation of those two networks, what will happen is something, a phenomenon called long-term potentiation. And we will see transformations in the presynaptic knob, where we will start releasing more neurotransmitters, and we find transformation in the postsynaptic knob, where we will build more receptors to receive those messages all in all, increasing the activation and the power of the signal in those neurons, building a more intimate relationship.
between these two neurons. The research on neuroplasticity has become fascinating. And those changes we talked about on a micro level have a larger and a bigger effect on a macro scale. In University of Cambridge, we discovered that cab drivers who use their visual spatial part of their brain, cab drivers because they have to memorize the maps and the city in a visual perspective, we found out that cab drivers have an increase in the volume of their posterior hippocampus. At the same time, we found out that children who suffer from anxiety and stressed homes have an increased number of networks and size in their amygdala which is a part of the limbic brain responsible for the fear response. But what's amazing is that we also found out that people who meditate and practice mindfulness have an increase in the size of the prefrontal cortex, but at the same time, people who are suffering from stress have a shrinking in their prefrontal cortex. This idea is fascinating. The idea itself is so powerful to know that your brain is a dynamic, responsive organ that is always capable of changing. The idea itself is so powerful that it got me thinking that could my anxiety today, my mental health problems today, my negative thoughts, my complaining, my self-doubt, could all these features be no more or no less than hyper-connected circuits conditioned by childhood? conditioned by the flow and passing of time. The idea is so powerful. And the second question that arises, if that neuroplasticity is something that does not stop, it can, it's always constantly changing until you die. If that's the case, then the question is, can I change my mental health perspective? Can I change the way I see myself and I see the world? And the answer is absolutely yes. The idea was so powerful that it helped me and my brother transform our perspective of mental health. We became better. We didn't go to a doctor. We didn't take any medication. It was just the power of the idea that my brain is plastic, my brain is dynamic. That in itself transformed us. Now I know many people think it's too romantic to say that ideas can change us. But this is why I'm here today. This is why I love the TED conference so much. Because it's on this stage where we humans celebrate the most powerful and impactful ideas in the world. Actually, the TED mission on the website is we believe passionately in the power of ideas to change attitudes, lives, and ultimately the world. And we've seen through history how the greatest ideas came out of the greatest conflicts and greatest problems. For a great idea, you need a great conflict or a great problem. And we've seen time and time again through history how, the, how ideas, just simple ideas, have the power to transform culture and human thinking. One great example on that is the Renaissance. How single concepts, a school of ideas from humanism, ideas about how important humanity was, ideas about how important education was, ideas alone were powerful enough to usher in a new Renaissance, a rebirth in Europe linking the bridge between the dark ages and the modern world. But a more powerful example is the Apollo 8 mission from NASA. The spacecraft takes a picture of the first ever Earthrise phenomenon. We see our fragile blue planet suspended in the blackness of space. The picture was so powerful that only in the next couple of years after we received this picture, the power in this picture was powerful enough to change our cultural laws and our political systems relating to environmental protection. Actually, in a matter of only two years, we, we, we invented the first Environmental Earth Protection Agency, we called the first Earth Day, and we banned DDT, and we started suddenly caring about the Earth and the environment, just from a single shot of the planet from space. Far away, from politics and environmental protection. My name is Hani Akashe, and I'm aspiring to one day be a psychiatrist. And I spend most of my time searching for ideas that can have the power and the potential to change a crisis that I think is way bigger and way more complex than global warming or politics. A crisis that I think sits at the heart of all our problems. 
and this crisis is the mental health crisis. To me, I feel like the world is suffering a collective soul sickness. The statistics don't lie. Anxiety and depression are being diagnosed at traits we've never seen before. Neuropsychiatric disorders are now among the leading cause of disability in the planet. And sadly, and according to the World Health Organization, 800,000 people commit suicide every year. That is more than the number of people who die from armed conflict and natural disasters combined. But all the statistics I tell you about, they mostly come from developed countries. When it comes to developing countries like our Jordan, the statistics become scarier. According to the World Health Organization, six of the most urgent countries in the world in need of mental health reform were chosen. And Jordan was chosen as the lead country to receive that action plan. This to me reflects the desperate state of mental health in my country, and it breaks my heart. But we said great ideas come out of great conflicts. We need a great problem to have a great idea. This is when my brother and I thought of an idea that could activate, that can catalyze a healing process, raising awareness on mental health in Jordan. And this was drawn out of our personal ex inspirational experience ourselves. How when we learned about the human brain, it helped us develop our mental health. It helped us optimize our perception of mental health. So we thought maybe we could do something about the mental health issue in Jordan. We decided to open our first neuroeducation company, a company that is specialized in teaching people key concepts in neuroscience that we thought could help them change their perspective of mental health. We used visual animations, technology. We wanted to create a fun and exciting way for people to discover more about their brains. And we were so lucky and so blessed to have our company grow so fast in such a short time. Working with people from across the spectrum, working with universities, tech companies, corporate giants. When we put this idea and we reached out to adults suffering from stress and anxiety, and when we told them about brain plasticity and the relationship between the frontal cortex and the amygdala, the power of the message itself gave them intrinsic motivation to understand how powerful meditation and mindfulness can be in controlling your anxiety and your stress symptoms. But the real results were when we, work, when we started working with children. When we taught little kids about brain plasticity, the power of the idea itself pushed them to a more growth-oriented mindset. It's like now they know that they can face their challenges, that change is inevitable if you keep practicing and you keep working. And we already know from great researchers like Carol Dweck that the mindset of children will really be a huge indicator to their success in later stages of life. Actually, one of the sweetest thing, we got a message from one of the parents who we've given in this uh, workshop to their children. And she described in the message how mathematics stopped becoming a nightmare for these children and started becoming something they enjoy. <laughs> this is the power of understanding our brain. This is the power of understanding how, how dynamic and changing our brains are. And brain plasticity, when it's given to children, it can really revolutionize the way how they see themselves. Isn't it something I, and I, I wanted to uh, kind of let that play out as, as long, for, to, you know, to grab those points, uh, to highlight those points. But listen, if you want to check out the rest of the clip, um, you can always Google it um, or YouTube it and you'll find uh, this brother here uh, in the TED Talks. So all you have to just type in is brain plasticity and it'll come up. Uh, but I, I love, you know, how he's you know, breaking this down and explaining it uh, and how it's having a real impact. And I love that he highlighted the children. Um, many of us, you know, uh, I often say when I, when I encounter my clients in social service settings, I would say, you know, a lot of us, 
uh, or even when I was dealing with people that was navigating out of addictions, I would say many of us have valid reasons why we are the way we are, but none of us have a justification, you know, to stay the way that we are. And um, and how we, for a long time, because of religious conditioning, you know, addressing people and behaviors, and you know, trying to preach, you know, behavior modification, pro, you know, programming, if you will, you know, uh, only did nothing but perpetuate more trauma in a person's life, you know. And so, you know, we have a, it's a growing field uh, of service for people that's uh, dealing with religious trauma, um, and so we've done a poor job as the church and really conveying father's heart, right? <laughs> uh, and, and so in, in many people, you know, in deconstructing fundamentalism, I, I say, um, and that's just my opinion, right? Uh, is, is, you know, has done a job, you know, on the Western church. <laughs> uh, and, and it has, and uh, it has impacted a lot of people uh, in their lives. And so, you know, uh, the anatomy of belief is to just, you know, raise our awareness, you know, over these episodes of, of, of perspectives, hitting it from all angles, right? <laughs> uh, so that we can explore, you know, uh, these truths and become more aware, you know, of our own thinking, of our own mental processes, you know, and take the control back. You know, God has given us that grace, that authority and power over our own kingdom, right? <laughs> it's not about uh, changing other people's kingdom. I mean, that's easy. We want other people to change, you know, their kingdom. Uh, but how about changing uh, yours and facilitating the change, you know, in your own kingdom, right? And aligning your heart, your your your, your body, your cells on a, on a cellular level, you know, comes in alignment and everything thrives. Science affirms that everything thrives in love. Uh, 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 they found out that when, you know, when the babies are crying at the nursery, right? Um, it, they did this uh, uh, experiment and they found that w the more that babies were uh, hugged, uh, loved and attentive to, uh, I think there's a experiment on baby monkeys or something, um, that the more they were loved and attentive to, the neural pathways in their brains began to grow and develop uh, and fire. And then those baby uh, uh, monkeys that wasn't uh, attended to and cared for, uh, that same area uh, was, you know, there was no, uh, no firing in the brain, no electronic, uh, electric, uh, not electronic, <laughs> electric firing or activity, you know, um, in, in the cortex of the brain. Um, and so, uh, uh, emotional impact, you know, just from love and kindness. And this is why we can watch, you know, uh, there was this show, man, you talking about, I used to love this show. Uh, uh, when they do the house, they improve the house, and they say, move the bus out of the way. <laughs> and then they uh, came in and they uh, refurbished the house and did some work on it. You know, the family was at a financial disadvantage. And then all of a sudden they, they see the house and they begin to cry and, and we begin to cry. <laughs> uh, and it's the same thing with Undercover Boss. So, you know, uh, uh, these TV shows understand the the uh, the science of, of giving and that when people see the acts of kindness, when people see the acts of, of blessings happening um, in other people's lives, our brain is wired to release um, certain uh, chemicals in our brain, you know, that it, it causes us to have exceeding joy, comfort, you know, uh, 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 excitement, you know, and, and there's healing hormones that's releasing our body. And so one of the practices that I do, I know it, it may sound weird, but I actually smile, right? And so even before I go to bed, when I go to bed at night, I smile. When I wake up in the morning, I smile. I'm intentional. Uh, and the reason why I do this intentionally is because, you know, there's a, a, a healing chemicals, you know, that's releasing our body when we smile, right? And so I reflect on, so this is where, you know, uh, uh, he talked about mindful practices, right? You know, there's you know, the Bible talks about think on these things that are good, lovely and good report. You know, that's mindfulness, you know, reflecting on father's goodness, uh, reflecting on his goodness in our lives and that, you know, his goodness is 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 not apart from us. Right. Is we're inseparable. His goodness and his love. Uh, we are inseparable. And so reflecting on his goodness, reflecting on that, you know, it stirs 
those hormones in our body to be released chemically in our body. And so I do that intentionally. And I want to read this, uh, um, you know, before we get off the air here. Uh, I posted this recently and I, and I just think that it's really fitting uh, for today's show. I called it right and wrong behaving. I said, right behaving does not make you righteous in, you know, in or before God, no less than wrong behaving can make you any less righteous before God. A truth that shocks the conscious, and I know, and it drives the human ego insane hearing it because it robs the reasoning of self, self-reliance, self-made, self-sufficiency, self-perceptions, in or the failure thereof to be otherwise. Any, any of any drivenness to be righted in one's own eyes out of willpower and human effort alone. No less different than the reason of self to judge oneself for its wrong behaving, clearly self-doubting, self-loathing, self-hatred, uh, and self-condemning has to be punished, right? By reason of our modus operandi. I mean, that's how we've been conditioned to operate. Our human default mechanism. What kid wasn't punished or redirected for his or her misbehaving and some really abusively? We've been conditioned to do so. So ego, our human ego, right, uh, responds the way it's been trained to do it to do what is what is natural. So when the goodness of God encounters our awareness, right, of understanding, it reaches beyond those human programmings or default factory settings, I call it, if you will, and gives a hard reset, right, to the conscious mind given that it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance or metanoia, a changed mind, or I would say a convinced mind. See, God has convinced you that he loves you, right? <laughs> you know, we've had deficits, you know, of love in our life where people conveying that they love us and never really loved us adequately, you know, or giving us a standard of what true love is. But Father does this in our hearts and our lives. And we have these metanoia moments and believe that we, we're loved by God, right? And the sin consciousness programming is replaced in the reboot with a Christ consciousness awareness upgrades, I call it. <laughs> so let, as the scripture says, let, or I say, let allow this mind, what mind? The Christ mind be in you. Then it's no longer a dual reasoning of understanding of a good versus evil, a right versus wrong. No, just simply being his righteousness which is our new nature of thinking, doing, and being. This is the good news of the gospel. You no longer have to judge oneself to be right or wrong, just simply as is. As he is, so are you. And from that place of programming, you find fruit, fruitfulness of living and fruit that remains. So stop condemning self and lose the need to justify self. And just live in the love of as he is, your true self. And that old programming was never you know how, right? <laughs> Father has always loved you, no matter how yourself behaved. Why should we be, or why should you be any different? Okay. Uh, and so uh, that's where I will land the plane today. Uh, on this episode four of exploring the anatomy of belief. Listen, I thank you guys for tracking, you know, with us um, and uh, commenting, sharing, and just following along. Listen, if uh, if if you have a comment, um, you would love to share. You have a question, please feel free to uh, post um, and do that. Uh, this is, like I said, this is a open forum <laughs> and you are part of this show, right? It's not just me sitting up here trying to lecture or anything to sound, uh, uh, biblical or <laughs> to be the arbiter of all things true. Listen, we're all on a journey of exploration of understanding, um, as a, and we can do, and we do this best, uh, when it's in, uh, when we do it in community, yo, you guys. And so, um, I love the opportunity to be on this platform and to share with you guys um, and to share my perspectives, my thoughts. And I'm looking forward and excited about other episodes. And I'm excited about episode five because I, I'm, I'm going to try to 
bring on a guest so that we can uh, really pull out those points and highlight, you know, even those contradictions. How do you live in the midst of contradictions, you know, or those, uh, you know, those those moments, right? That those moments of tension, you know, I know this to be true, but yet this is evident in my life, right? Um, and that's not to ignore, you know, reality, but then you have to really truly define, you know, what is reality? Um, and Father challenged me that one time. He asked me, you know, what is reality? I was like, wow, well, you know, I don't know, you know. <laughs> uh, but that's how he deals with me at times. And I knew that that meant to dig in you know, to go on this journey of exploration, you know, to really, to really define, you know, what is reality. Most of our reality is based upon uh, con social constructs, how we've been conditioned socially and how we've been conditioned really rigid, religiously, right? You know, but now it's time in aspects of that reconditioning that I believe that's really taking place, you know, globally, a reconditioning is taking place. <laughs> and, um, and in that in that place of reconditioning, we're finding that foundational place to really uh, identify ourselves as one with the Father, right? And out of that awareness of oneness, we'll see the radical transformation and change, you know, um, in in our lives and in the lives of those that are connected to us. Um, listen, uh, they like Peter, right? Uh, Such as I have, <laughs> you know, I give unto you, you know. If and, and there's a substance, there's a well a life that's on the each that's on on the inside of each and every one of us and and it's time that we give the world around us because the world grown for the manifestation of the sons of god you know such as we have and that's a depth awareness of a connection with father in his love and communicating to the world around us with love and healing them you know emotionally mentally you know with our words you know with our actions uh again pastor mike uh, preach that phenomenal message on what love is. And I encourage you guys to check that out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for uh, liking and sharing GOMA um, in uh, this show, Sunday School Live with your host, Jermaine Thomas. And I'm going to exit out uh, with my favorite song, guys. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I got to turn it up. Hold on. It's time.